What's going on guys? Um, today I'm going to do a comic book review. Um, it's only my second ever review. So um, if you haven't seen my show before, basically uh, I am very new to comic books. Uh, I don't know a lot about the world, but I do like to talk about it because um, it has become a new obsession of mine. Um, today we're going to talk about the book Witches by Scott Snyder. Um, just their one shot uh, Bad Eggs Halloween special, which was released last year, uh, which I read last night. So let's do this. Okay, so since uh, getting into comic books, one thing I've realized is comic book fans uh, get really into certain writers. Now for me, being a noob, um, I don't really, I guess, chase certain writers. I just see what I want to read. I'm like, I'll read that. Um, but definitely I have noticed that people are the, the writers and the artists obviously are the true heroes of the comic book world. Scott Snyder, a lot of people are big fans of Scott Snyder. Um, I do read the current uh, Batman Who Laughs series, which he uh, does do. Um, and obviously he was uh, obviously very well known for his uh, Batman run. One of the first things I read from Scott Snyder was uh, Dark Knight's Metal. Um, I was actually really pumped to read that series. Uh, it gets a lot of uh, praise. Uh, people love that series. Now, for me, um, Scott Snyder, I find some of his stuff is quite confusing for me, for, for a noob. Now, I'm sure if you've been to comics for a long time, you might have read Dark Knight's Metal and been like, oh my God, this is the best shit ever. But for a newbie, a new reader like me, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on right now? Um, why is there a dragon with the face of the Joker on there? A lot of it just didn't make sense to me, I guess. Uh, so I wasn't huge on that series. I did collect it, however. It took me a long time to um, actually collect the Dark Knight's Metal series, but I do have the complete series. Uh, I actually want to get them all individually. Uh, I'm not into trades. I want, I'm one of those weirdos. I have to have them all separate. Um, so yeah, when I finally got them, you know, I took the time to read it all and it just was really confusing to me. So I wasn't huge on Dark Knight's Metal. I'm not saying that it was bad by any stretch. It, for a new reader, I just found it very confusing. Now I know Everyone talks about the Court of Owls, um, and I'm sure the Court of Owls is a great is a great story. Um, but you know what? I haven't read it. Hey, don't lose your shit too much. I do own these things, so uh, I do plan on reading these one day. I just have a lot of back catalogue to catch up on at the moment, so I'll get around to it. So I'm sure it's going to be great. So yeah, stop tripping out on me. So yeah, like I'm aware that there's all these famous writers. I mean, I know the names: Greg Capullo. Um, you know, I know Tom King obviously writes the current Batman series. Um, I just don't know writers like like real comic book fans do. Um, so Snyder for me, I just find a lot of people love his stuff. And I guess the stuff that I've read, um, not huge on metal, it was okay. Um, I do enjoy the Batman Who Laughs, which is the current thing he's doing. Um, but I must say, Witches, that I read last night was absolutely wicked. I enjoyed this from start to finish. Um, literally just a few pages in, I'm just like, oh shit, this book ain't fucking around. Um, very, brutal violence and uh, things like that. It's quite scary in some moments. I can't, I never thought a comic book could kind of give you some chills, but uh, it sort of has that vibe about it as well. The art in this book is done by Jock. I don't know who that is, but uh, he's obviously very well known in the comic book world. Um, Snyder uh, seems to like working with Jock. Uh, he, they do work together on the Batman Who Last series. And uh, I have listened to podcasts with Scott Snyder on it, and he does talk very highly about Jock and working with him. So yeah, for a new reader, I, I think this story, one-off story, is um, very easy to get into, into for anyone. Um, I think it would make a great short film. Uh, in fact, I, I feel like I read somewhere that Witches is maybe getting turned into a show. Uh, but this is a one-off story. It would be a great short film, I think. Now, obviously, it probably would have been easier if I had read the original Witches series. Um, this is basically a bridge between the first story... Um, first volume, whatever you want to call it, and I believe they're doing a second uh, story arc, uh, which is still to come. Um, but this is kind of like a bridge between them, I believe. I have not read the original Witches. I did happen to pick it up just the other day uh, in a, as a trade um, from Supernova while I was there. Um, but yeah, it probably would have helped a lot if I read this first. But I just I've been planning to review this for quite some time, so um, I haven't got around to reading this yet. I, I, but now after reading this. I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I feel like it's going to make a lot more things about witches make sense. They don't go into too much detail about what witches do. I mean, they do explain witches, but um, they don't really, like, I don't really know too much about them from this story. I just know what they are, essentially. The art in this book is um, interesting. Look, the art's good, don't get me wrong, but there's this weird thing going on throughout the whole book where every single page has this weird, transparent sort of blood splatter, blood stain sort of thing to it. Um, I was not about that at all. Um, I think the art looked great. Um, 
and I feel like if they did that blood splatter, splatter thing in certain bits of the story, that would have worked, but it literally is throughout every page of this book, and it kind of annoyed me and makes a lot of things hard to see. Uh, maybe they did that deliberately. I mean, they obviously did it deliberately, um, but for me, I just wish that those blood splatter little moments to only happen in violent sections and things like that. So for me, visually, it wasn't bad, but that little blood thing effect that I had gone um, kind of did my head in a little bit. So look, all in all, I would say that I would recommend this to anyone. I don't feel like you need to read the original witches. I mean, this is essentially just a one-off story. Um, I feel like anyone could get into it. And literally from start to finish, there was not a second where I was not interested. Or I just wanted to know what, what was going on. And for me, being a new reader, what I like is when I'm reading something and it makes me want to read more or wants me, you know, makes me want to know what, what's gonna happen and things like that. So yeah, that's basically my review. Um, if you do plan on reading this and don't want any spoilers, I am about to tell you everything that happens in this story. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to my mate Dove, who, um, this is only my second comic book review. My first comic book review on uh, Raven, Daughter of Darkness, my friend Dub sent me a message saying, motherfucker, and he just <laughs> tore me to shreds on my review, telling me, hey man, when I watch comic book review, I want to see this, I want to hear about this, I want to know this, I don't want you to just tell the story. So, um... Thank you for that criticism, Dub. Uh, I will. T I do take it on board. Uh, any uh, constructive criticism is good, so um, I will take that on board. Please let me know if I do do anything wrong or what you do want to see from me. But this next part of the video, I am going to tell you everything that goes on in this book. So uh, if you don't want to know that, just uh, maybe press stop now. So the story is basically about a kid named Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian is the son of a lady named Clara. Now I believe Clara is from the original Witches series. Um, Clara is a witch hunter. You don't know this in the opening moments of the book, um, but literally just a few pages in, literally maybe two or three pages in, Sebastian's on his way to school um, and a van pulls up. Uh, one of his friend's parents are in there uh, offering him a lift to school because he's running late and he's just like, no, 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 I don't want a lift. Because um, basically he's been taught by his mom not to trust anyone. The parents, uh, his friend's parent basically insists uh, and eventually Sebastian's like, okay, I'll, I'll take this lift to, uh, to school. Uh, and as he's approaching the van, he notices something suspicious is going on in the van. The guy's like, come on, get in the van, get in the van. And then there is basically something terrifying in the van. It's basically a baby witch. Um, and next thing you know, and this is where I was like, holy fucking shit, this book ain't fucking around. Uh, knife through the head. Uh, Clara basically stabs that guy through the head um, and basically yells at Sebastian for, you know, even cont contemplating getting into that van. So you quickly learn, obviously, that Clara is a witch hunter and she's basically taught Seb to trust no one. Seb's not allowed to, Sebastian, is not allowed to have any friends. Uh, they always move from town to town because they're basically moving from town to town to basically deal with these witches. So yeah, he's basically told not to have any friends, um, but Sebastian's quickly explaining how he's uh, neighbor Jackson has quickly become, it's been hard to not be friends with him because it's like Jackson just really wants friends, you know, so they hang out all the time, they do this little car, slot car racing stuff together. And the reason the book I believe is the bad egg special is because Jackson and Sebastian are basically known as, they call themselves Team Bad Egg, uh, Bad Eggs, Bad Egg, uh, because basically their teacher in one little bit sort of refers to them as Bad Eggs. So they call themselves Team Bad Egg. And then there's a revelation basically where Sebastian's talking about how hard it is because he's become friends with Jackson. However, he is going to have to kill Jackson's whole family. That's some deep shit. So Jackson's family are high horns, um, which are responsible for starting uh, new burrows. Uh, and burrows are basically where baby witches are kept. So a high horn's job is to basically um, nurture this baby witch. Uh, it feed, they feed it baby animals or small animals and things like that um, until the baby is ready to basically eat a small child. Now when the witch eats a small child, that's how it's able to basically grow and then reproduce. Jackson's parents are basically preparing Jackson to be the child sacrifice um, and Clara, who Sebastian's mum, has basically given Sebastian the job to kill that baby as well as the parents. So what is a witch? No one really knows, but they basically um, live in burrows under the earth. Um, they're meant to be 10 feet tall, I'm guessing that's a full grown witch, uh, and they have two, uh, both their eyes on one side of their face. Picture that for a second. It's kind of scary. 
They have an ancient science apparently that they trade with people uh, for food. I'm guessing this ancient science, what is that? Like witchcraft, spells, I don't know what it is, but they have some ancient science and they trade it for food. Food being people. So they trade it with people and people will give them people so they can eat them. Now a suckler is basically uh, basically a witch worshipper uh, who will basically do favors for witches um, in for trade of their of the witches' medicines. They don't really explain what the this science sort of stuff is or the medicines that they um, that they have is in this story, um, which is why I feel like you really need to read that original story to really understand all of that sort of side of things. Now Seb is basically from a long line of witch hunters uh, which have been around for centuries so um, his family are all witch hunters um, which basically so if the witches were to get their hands on Sebastian basically he'd be like a prize trophy because he comes from this long line of witch hunters so the story really gets going one night when Jackson is knocking on Seb's um, window one night basically begging him to let him in and basically Jackson has basically figured out that his parents are up to something um, they keep giving him some sort of medicine telling him that he's going to get better uh, from this medicine and he realizes no I'm just getting more sick uh, he realizes something is up and basically explains that he followed his parents into the woods one night uh, where he where they basically visited a pit which had the baby witch and he sort of witnessed it all so Seb decides to break the golden rule uh, which his mum taught him and basically tells Jackson everything and that Jackson is basically being prepared by his parents to be fed to this baby witch ah! So, the two decide, let's go out and fuck this witch up. So Jackson takes Seb out to the woods where he knows, because he knows where the pit is. Um, and Jackson basically grabs this stuff called rub. Um, rub is basically, I believe, what Clara makes, uh, along with her helper, this guy called Gage. Um, and they make this stuff called rub, which essentially is stuff that you throw on, which is like a powdery sort of bullshit, or whatever it is, rub, like a meat rub. Um, and throw on witches, or throw on witch-related things, witch worshippers, whatever, and it just fucks their shit up. So Seb gives the rub stuff to Jackson when they get to the pit, he's like, you do it, this is, this is your fight basically. So you take the rub, you go fuck that baby witch up. Uh, as Jackson is approaching the pit out of nowhere, uh, Jackson's parents show up, and I don't know what they do, but it's like they shoot a spitball. You know the spitballs at school when you used to put the little wet paper in the pen and you shoot it to people? It's like they did something, I don't know. They get hit by something, um, Jackson, which almost like kind of paralyzes them, almost or just knocks them out a little bit. Um, Jackson falls into the pit with the witch, um, while Seb is kind of just gets sort of paralyzed on the ground, he just can't move or some shit like that. So Jackson is basically getting uh, mauled on by this witch. Uh, meanwhile, outside of the pit, um, Jackson throws this rub onto, um, sorry, Seb Sebastian throws this rub onto Jackson's dad and fucks Jackson's dad up um, and then has a struggle with Jackson's mum uh, where they basically both fall into the pit and she dies from the, from the fall. I think she lands on a rock or something and she, she dies. Um, and now Jackson is basically, sorry, Sebastian is in the pit while Jackson is getting mauled on by this witch. Uh, Sebastian basically um, distracts the witch and says, come on, get me. The witch starts to attack um, attack Sebastian. Sebastian literally thinks, I'm about to die. Oh my God, someone fucking help me. Someone fucking help me. And of course, Jackson, who's all fucked up, comes to the rescue, throws the rub on the witch, and the witch dies, I think. Pretty much dies. I'm doing some great storytelling, aren't I, here? <laughs> So after this, uh, the boys have a little moment where then of course Jackson sadly dies because he's too fucked up from the witch. There's obviously the sad little moment. Sebastian realizes that Jackson is basically going to be the best friend that uh, he'll ever have because he's not allowed to have friends, but Jackson has been the one guy who's been able to break through into that friendship. Uh, so yeah, sad little moment there. And then there's a big twist at the end where basically um, during the confrontation with the parents, uh, Sebastian, they told Sebastian that basically they had a mole working with the irons, the irons being obviously the, the family of witch hunters. And Sebastian basically quickly realizes it's got to be Gage. Gage is the, his mum's helper, Clara's helper. So he waits in the woods, basically knowing that they planned on meeting this, uh, this mole. So he waits in the bushes for this, uh, for Gage essentially. But what happens is his mum shows up instead and he's like, oh my God, mum, I can't believe it was you instead. So it turns out that his mum was the, the mum was the um was the mole. So Clara is basically telling Sebastian that she's ashamed of him because he's such a pussy and things like that. So that's why she did all this. Uh, and then she's basically looks like he's approaching Sebastian like she's about to kill him. Uh, and then Sebastian basically throws the rub on her. She's like, ah, it's hurting, it's hurting. And then basically here's the next twist where she's like, 
gotcha. Um, basically, it was a test, she said. It was a test for Sebastian to see if she really had, if he really had the balls, I think, to attack his own mum, which he did. So he passed with flying colours, um, and she's like, good on you. Uh, they basically, and that's pretty much the end of the story, they plan on moving towns again, and she says to him that, you know, he'll have more responsibility when it comes to the next town and their next job and their next mission. That's my uh, review for Witches. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed this story. I do recommend it to people if you like horror. Um, it's not so much your superhero stuff that I'm used to reading, um, but uh, it really, really was a good story. Um, I did enjoy it. So, till next time, peeps. Uh, Stay simple.